I mean, I, I, I've only I seen mean, four of you. So I see yeah. Gretchen. Oh, I see all my new girlfriends. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> and like so, romper room. You know, I see Peggy. I see Linda. Yeah. I see <laughs> Paula. This is, oh my gosh, that's great. Uh, what a Brady, lot of fun. We all start looking at each other like that, right? <laughs> like the Brady Bun? <laughs> like the Brady Bun. Like the Brady Bun. That's great. <laughs> I see Gretchen. <laughs> now, where's Lily? Can you see She's Hi. there. Hi. Oh, there you are. <laughs> we see your painting, but we don't see you. There's a cool oh, hi, Lily. Hi. It's There's Hadley. Hello, Hadley. Hi. How are you? There's Elizabeth. Hi, how are you? We're going to give you a congratulations right now, Hadley. Why? Because the first painting you posted just sold about half an hour ago. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's wonderful. It was uh, yeah. it was one of the people in our patrons event we did on the first night. She was looking hard at it then, and we noticed about half an hour ago she pulled the button. Oh, that's great! Well, congratulations! Congratulations! I'll be right back. Thank you. So if I tell people on my Facebook page, I say it's live on Sedona Plain Air Festival? No, it's Art on Sedona, Sedona Arts Center. Uh, it's Facebook. Okay. Facebook.com forward slash Sedona Arts Center. You can actually also share the Zoom link, which I did on my page. Uh, don't share the Zoom link. Don't, don't share the Zoom don't? link. No, no. We're, not, we're not allowing it. This is not for the no, for not the right. Zoom link, but the Facebook Zoom. You can share the Facebook Zoom. Does that make sense? Oh, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, from <laughs> Facebook, not the actual <laughs> Zoom link. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't say that right. Sorry, no worries. So, Vince, you want me to highlight you and you want to get started? Yeah, yeah, let's go for it. All right, hi, everybody. I hope, uh there's a lot of you out there because we've got a neat show for you tonight. We're uh, broadcasting from all kinds of places around the country. We have a wonderful group of all female artists in the 16th annual Sedona Plein Air Festival. And we're at midweek and we've invited all the artists to join us and join together and have a little discussion about the process of art. So what's going to happen is um, each artist has selected a painting from their body of work to talk about tonight. And they're going to talk about whatever aspect of process they want to, artistic process. And it'll be interesting to get a lot of different perspectives. Because of the, uh, nor normally we have our plein air festival in Sedona, Arizona, and we're all gathered together in big crowds and so on, and we couldn't do that this year. So we invited uh, the group of women artists that were, that were hosting this year through the Sedona Art Center to paint from all their different locations and do the entire uh, event virtually. So we've created on our website a plein air festival gallery and it's very easy and fun to navigate. Artwork has been coming in ever since we started on Saturday, October 24th. And some artists have two pieces, some artists have four pieces, some artists have six pieces up. Um, and so we're doing this exciting midweek event. Um, Kelly, who's the first artist we're gonna talk to? Let's go with Laura. Okay. Laura. Hi. Laura, what are you going to discuss with us? What painting that you did this week? Well, um, first of all, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to do a virtual event. Um, a lot of the events were canceled or postponed it. So this was really a, a good avenue and a way to do it. 
I will say though, you also challenged me because it's been raining. I'm, I live in the Hudson Valley in New York and it's been raining and foggy almost all week. So those oh, who well, normally just stay home, um, but now I've been forced a new challenge to go out and paint. So the painting that I selected is called Obscurity and it was done in Harriman State Park, which is about an hour north of New York City along the Hudson River. Um, and the reason I selected that particular location was because the fog was rolling in and was covering the mountains, but then not, and back and forth. And wow. uh, the mist on the water on the uh, lake I was looking over. Okay. Um, really Let's bring that me. up. Let's bring that work up. It's called Obscurity. And Kelly's going to. Uh, what did I do? Nice. Bring that up for us. Love oh, it. So pretty. I, I work in pastels. Um, on sanded paper. I use uh, a variety of uh, manufacturers of soft pastel. And uh, uh -huh. I start, like most uh, painters, I believe, start is big, bold areas of lights and darks. And then I work my way up to what most people refer to as details. And I just like to call smaller marks and smaller lines. So, um, great. Like I said, the, the thing that was interesting to me was that there is there was a mountain there and it all the <laughs> color that's in the Hudson Valley, which I, again, am challenged to paint because it sometimes comes out very garish and um, unbelievable. So the fact mm. that it was all muted that day and um, it, was, it was just a very inspiring location. Lovely. Thank you, yes. Thank you for nice. sharing that with us. And um, th again, that's a pastel. Kelly, um, can you let me know who the next artist is we're going to hear from? Crystal Brown. Okay, Crystal Brown. And Kelly, can you show us the overall gallery and how you kind of get to that painting? Or is that inconvenient? <laughs> Okay, great. So here we are in the uh, on the Sedona Plein Air Festival website. And if you click on the virtual gallery right there, it takes you to all the Plein Air Festival work. And so you can see how many works there are by each artist. That's that number beside their name. It indicates the number of works they've submitted so far. The event is going to uh, to uh, come to a fruition on Saturday, October 31st, Halloween, right? And oh, oh, man. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to have an award ceremony at 5 p.m. Arizona time on that night. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the work that Crystal Brown has chosen. Flatland loveliness. Okay. Crystal, Hi. Tell, us, tell us where you were. Well, I was north of my home about 30 minutes in a place called Dobbin, Texas. Actually, uh, it's really close to Magnolia. And I must agree that I am so grateful that you went through with the event and at least let us paint from where we are. I had intended to plan, I had intended to be in Sedona and mm -hmm. teach a workshop after this event and both <laughs> got changed and so my chance, my plans changed as well and I admit I struggled. We have such a beautiful world that we live in and sometimes that beauty just smacks you in the face. And I live in flat Houston, Texas. And it's been raining for days and overcast. And so I had to go out and seek the beauty. And it's always there when we look for it. So um, that was my first challenge. And I'm grateful that you gave us the opportunity to paint and to submit work and to have a deadline and to treat it like a plein air event. So thank you for that. Um, about you. the painting, this I called it Flatland Loveliness because 
you can just see how painfully flat it is here. And, but it is beautiful. It has its own beauty. And um, part of what I love about plain air, besides being outside and being able to walk the land and love on every inch of it, you know, in that little, that little field of vision that we choose to create our peace, is being out in nature and the drive that gets us there, or the walk or the hike. Um, it's that solitude and that time alone that um, really uh, gets me excited and connected to where I am, no matter where I am. So uh, I've actually painted this area before, but on the other side of the bridge. And in Texas, if you go and read through my gallery posts, I will write about my painting. I didn't get shot the other day when I was on private property, so that's a good day. <laughs> you will. Um, you will see a lot of fences and roads in these paintings because Texas is private property everywhere. There's very few public spaces and so that's frustrating. Um, but this, I'm right up against the fence and there were cows there when I began this painting, but I knew they would move so I let them go. And um, I just wanted to take the viewer on a path. I wanted you to be able to walk that mowed grass, that mowed field, through the creek and up over onto the other side and way back into that sunlit field at the very back. And just to let you see what I see. So that's it. Lovely, I love the, the very active uh, and varied paint field that you create. Um, and uh, I love the stories that you write about your painting process and the <laughs> places that you find yourself and situations you find yourself in so that's that's very uh nice of you to share all that with us thanks and kelly um who's up next i'm working on it this first time i'm i'm in production company as well eileen <laughs> brown is going to be up there. hey well that's the the wonder of live whatever it is tv live computer live zoom live facebook live anything yeah <laughs> it's got its challenges it's easier than making movies though um i'll tell you that. <laughs> we like your intro yeah, oh yeah your good. intro was great it was hilarious it was great. so good that was i good. had a lot on the cutting floor still too to go <laughs> <Yeah>. with <laughs> use it again next time once we got the idea to do that, I sent a, Kelly a lot of stuff. Maybe you can do a bloopers reel. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So Eileen Guernsey Brown, you're up. Okay, hi. Well, my name's Eileen Guernsey Brown, as you said. I live in Salt Lake City. And I, um, we have a little house. My husband and I bought an old uh, dilapidated 800 square foot little farmhouse about two hours south of Salt Lake in Spring City which is a really neat little community of, I'd say there's probably 30 or 40 artists that live here. And um, it's a very lovely place to paint. Lots of beautiful trees, mountains. And uh, the reason that I painted this one is right across the street. From me. So it was very easy to get up in the morning and bring my setup out there. And I've painted this tree many times. It's across the street. And I guess, um, you know, the different seasons just really attract me to the shapes of the tree and the colors. I love complementary colors. And there's always just a sense of urgency when you're painting a fall scene, I think, with the leaves about to blow away the next day. And in fact, today, there are no leaves on the tree. And this was four days ago. <laughs> so wow. Felt really happy that I got to paint this. Um, and just like others have said, I feel really grateful to be included in this group of amazing women artists. And although we're not in Sedona, I think we each bring a perspective of our, uh, the nature around us where we live. And it's really exciting to see what, it, what everyone produces. Um, I love being outside and anytime you can combine being outside and painting is kind of a win-win situation for me. Um, I don't know if you have other questions or anything else I could answer for you. Well, like, it's, kind of, it's yeah. kind of neat to, um, it's kind of neat to revisit a, a, a particular subject again and 
in. Yeah. Um, as you said, uh, something that's nearby and accessible can, I keep staring at this set of branches out back of my place, you know? Yeah, and, it was the branches that really kind of got me with this one. I love that right. one long, low one that kind of hangs out. And, right. and there's kind of a road that goes the, the, about a third of the way up where, the, where you can see the line. That, that's a, a highway, actually. Uh -huh. and mostly tractors go by it, though. So <laughs> tractors <laughs> and sheep is what uh, kind of goes by. So it's kind of a tree on the corner of all this activity, but it's very rural. And um, I don't know, I just love... I love painting it. Um, so I'm looking forward to the winter time when it's going to be just branches and snow piled up. Right. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you. And a reminder that everything is for sale. Everything is for sale and it's easy to buy on our website. You just click that button, bam. You got it. Thank you, Ellen. Thanks. So Michelle Byrne, we're going to go with you next. Okay. Hello. Well, I'm Michelle Byrne and I am feeling super fortunate because the reason I applied to this event was because I knew I was moving to Santa Fe and I thought, oh, I can drive to Sedona, but it's turned out to be a real blessing for me because I feel like a kid in a candy store. Like I'm in Santa Fe. I just moved here in July. And there's a thousand million gazillion things I want to paint. So it's getting me out to paint every day. And I have this infatuation with architecture and buildings and figures. I love to put figures in my work. So um, a few weeks ago, I saw the, how the morning sunlight was shining and striking the edge of the Loretto Chapel, which is the oldest chapel, I think, in Santa Fe. And it has this amazing staircase inside that the nuns named the Miraculous Staircase because they needed a staircase to get up for the choir to go up to the top to sing and they couldn't find anyone and the nuns prayed for nine days and nine nights and after they were done a man showed up that was a carpenter he put the stairwell in and he disappeared and they never really knew who he was so they, they had prayed to saint joseph mm -hmm. and uh, so now they think because he, he's the pa patron saint of carpenters so anyway it's an interesting story and I was really trying to figure out how to make that church facade simplified because it's extremely, extremely, um, it's like Gothic, uh, Gothic French architecture. And um, I'm a palette knife painter, so I just was swooshing over it like a million times until I, I got it where I liked it. And then people were walking by. It's one of the biggest tourist attractions in Santa Fe. So there was a constant stream of people and that was one of the warm days. That was the first day, Saturday. And Sunday was warm. And then Monday, I woke up to 21 degrees and six inches of snow. So I, um, I experimented with a steering wheel easel, which was fabulous. So um, it's been exciting and challenging. I have like a million places I wanted to paint with the sun out, but now it's been the, the snow. And um, but anyway, it's just been really exciting. So thank you for having this because otherwise, I know I wouldn't have probably painted at all this week. Maybe maybe the two sunny days, but not not the right. snowy ones. You so wouldn't it, have painted the one yeah. you you just did. Kelly, can you show us that what she was? There you go. So there she is painting. There's the sketch. That's lovely. And uh, there's the painting in the frame. A, Beautiful a black frame with gold trim. Mm -hmm. And then Kelly, take us to the next day when she's painting. Uh, the last work that was just submitted. Yeah, uh, so I drove around and it was interesting because um, yep. the leaves had just, they were still golden against the snow and I was trying to capture that, but um, the scene I ended up, I had to find a place where I could park. The, and, the last one, snowy adobe. Yeah, I had to um, find a place where I could park and also have a view and I was sitting there and uh, wishing like a, somebody would walk by so I could figure out how tall a person would be. And this man came up and checked his mailbox and then he disappeared. <laughs> and then he came up again and he was, he was either checking the mail again or he was trying to figure out why I was sitting across from his house <coughs> two hours. <laughs> right. but, uh, I love to put figures in and if they walk by that they're usually in my painting. So it was fun. Changes in the weather, very nice. That's a nice, uh... 
It was a great setup. So any of you artists that don't have one, they're fabulous. <laughs> This hooks right on your steering wheel. Over the car, right? <laughs> oh, wow. Tell us more about that. Where did you find that, Michelle? It's Michelle, by the way. Yes. <laughs> um, um, Teresa Vito, who is a fabulous painter that lives in Pueblo, Colorado, her boyfriend, Greg Zimmerman, makes them. Oh. And it just hooks right on your steering wheel. And then I just covered my passenger seat with the tarp and laid everything down on. I didn't even get any paint on my car. It was amazing. So it was uh, <laughs> brilliant. It really is. I will be doing that again. <laughs> I have one and I, I love it. Greg is great. It's a great- yeah, Peggy, community. Peggy's the one who told me about it. Thank you, Peggy. Yeah. I'll be talking to you, Peggy. <laughs> me too. He's gonna get a big order now. Yep. Yeah, this is great. Nice. Betty will be next. Is Betty Carr next? <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, hi there. Wow, hey, follow me, hey, these wonderful hey, women. Hey, They're just such it. great artists. And there you are. Um, all I have to say is ditto, 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 ditto. You know, <laughs> with all of you. It's just wonderful that you've said. Um, I wanted to convey a couple of things that I find really important in. <laughs> Um, my directions for these paintings, and that is the sketchbook. Ooh. The sketchbook. That's pretty sweet. Now, all of you do value sketches. I, I want to stress, or may, mostly tell you what I've um, found myself as growing as a, a you know, somewhat artist. <laughs> is the planning and the composition and how the eye leads yourself to the focal point. So throughout my, uh, this was a, 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 a area in um, Provence where I just taught and it's, it's just taking the photograph, doing a value sketch and making the composition to your liking. And so in this painting here that I have, with Cathedral Rocks, I really planned to have your eye, your eyes move through to go kaboom to the focal point. And mm -hmm. that's kind of what I wanted to convey, uh, how, how a plan. So we have, we have this painting up here and basically it, it, there's an area, as you all know, the golden mean, an area that's somewhat slighter light and all of the flow of the river is going to that somewhat limited light. And I was, that's what I wanted to convey to, to YouTube, you know, people and all of you, that mm -hmm. the planning stage is so important. Excellent. That's great. That's a great perspective on the whole process. Thank you, Betty. Good, good. You, you, you had mentioned the process and I really wanted to convey that to you, to you all. It's all that background work, you know, that happens in the sketchbook that it people, does. Never see, people never see, but, or maybe they never see it. Um, it's the blueprint. But, yeah, it's the blueprint. Right? It's the blueprint. Mm -hmm. So again, thank you. And as well, all of the other artists have said, thank you again for keeping this virtual event going on, Vince. I know it's a lot of work for you, Kelly, and the whole staff it's really helping a lot of people. I love the idea that we get to see what other artists are doing. Like you guys are doing great stuff in Texas. I love what you've done out there. <laughs> yeah. And so it's a great uh, job. <laughs> Thank it you. Gives, it gives us a chance to, um, to share as you just did with your sketchbook, share different aspects of, the process along the way. Some artists are making movies and sending them in. Very spontaneous, uh, on-site, mm -hmm. kind of a glimpse into the into the midst of the process, which is really I neat. love that. The fogginess. Oh, that was great. You know, and also, oh, I taught in the Hudson River Valley area. I mean, you caught that. Mm. Was that, who was that? Was it Casey? Maura? The first, the first artist. 
Well, the Hudson River Valley River. area. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> and so anyway, Karen, thanks who's, again. Who's up next, Kelly? Casey's up next. Casey? I'm here. Hi. Hey, Casey, what, what have you been up to? Oh, you know, fixing my flat tire, breaking my tripod. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. The oh, no. painting. Oh, yeah. Oh. I was at Takapaki. I was going to, it was Monday. It was so cold here. Okay, you guys who are in really climates, I apologize. I know 40 degrees doesn't seem like that big a deal. But try to remember, you know, a couple of weeks ago, it was over 100 degrees here. So that's a 60 degree difference. So for me, 40 degrees is like, I'm freezing. You know, I, we're just not used to it. We're hothouse flowers out here. So yeah, it's been, it's been a plein air adventure. Um, I just came off another plein air event in Prescott. I did the first annual Prescott plein air festival. So I did um, go back and visit some friends who have a beautiful home up there, up at Talking Rock Ranch. and. I spent some time um, wandering around there. I did a little bit of the painting there, so you'll see a couple paintings from Prescott. And then I decided I was gonna come to Sedona because we timeshare here. And so we're here, uh, wow, that's really bright on my screen. So here about 30 days, I would say out of the year in normal times, this year we have not visited nearly as much. Uh, but when we do come out here, this is one of my favorite places to paint. Um, this is the Adobe Jack Trailhead. It's right in the middle of town. If you're familiar with Sedona, it's just a little bit past, as you're heading west on 89A, it's just a little bit past uh, the Mariposa restaurant, fabulous restaurant. And it's a tiny little parking lot, only about five or six spaces. So sometimes you have to vulture a little bit where you can actually park there. But it's a beautiful little trail system. It's fabulous for both hiking and mountain biking. Uh, which both my husband and I really like to do. I had my hip replaced in July, so I'm just now starting to get, you know, baby steps back into hiking again because I've been off of it for so long. And I can't wait to actually get down in the trail. And that's kind of what I wanted to do with this piece, which by the way, in person is not quite this um, neon. I guess that's something to do with my how my screen saved it, so apologies for that. It's vivid, but it's not quite this vivid. Um, I really wanted to try to give the impression of, of depth and to find a way to pull the viewer's eye back and into that canyon and sort of create the sense that I have when I'm starting out on a new trail. You're like, oh, gee, I wonder what's back, what's around that bend? I wonder if I get over that hill, what am I going to see when I get over that hill? I wonder what's back there. Let's go, that looks pretty. Let's go down there and see what that is. So that sense of um, curiosity and discovery is something that I like to share in my work. Um, I say in my bio that my favorite shoes are hiking boots, <laughs> which appalled my mother for most of my, <laughs> for most of my youth. Uh, but it's true. I would rather be, yeah, I'd rather be out in nature and, uh, you know, hiking or biking or painting than doing just about anything else. And I feel that if we, if we don't have that natural connection, if we don't have a connection to the wilderness, if we don't appreciate it, if we don't take care of it, that we're kind of incomplete as, as a human being. So I try, to, um, I try to bring that out in my paintings. I actually went out, unusually for me, I usually paint a la prima, but for this particular piece, I went out two days in a row. I went out Monday and I went out again Tuesday. Uh, and painted two days subsequently because I just, I felt a little bit unfinished Monday. So I figured if it worked for Monet, it would work for me. Well, and that's a nice, that's a really nice composition. Love the way you. it, it mm -hmm. uh, the sense of overlapping and the way it creates depth is really terrific. And I think the colors look great, so. Thanks, Vince. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I have to tell you, I'm really happy with it in person. <laughs> And I think it looks beautiful in the in the frame that I chose. I chose one of my favorite frames by uh, by Randy Higby, King of Frames. It's called the Talus Frame, and it's just a lovely sort of a soft neutral grayish green. Yeah. And it's a floater frame for this piece, and I think it it really complements it without 
overwhelming the painting. So, nice. and I, I painted the clouds on Monday, but I decided to keep them on Tuesday because um, I just thought the clouds we had on Monday were great. And one of the compensations for being out on such a blustery day was getting some of those beautiful, fast moving clouds in the painting. Well, exactly. I like the way it feels uh, big on a very small format, eight by eight inches, but it feels like a much bigger painting. That would, that composition would make a nice large painting. I, it's in the works. <laughs> Thanks, man. We're, we're moving along with, uh, I think next we have Christine Dabrowski. We do. Thank you, Casey. Christine. Hello. How's it going hey, in the hotel world? It's going well. Uh, I'm really delighted to be a part of this. I think it's just great to see such a wide variety of uh, terrain. Although one of the things I love about being and working in Arizona is the amazing um, variety of uh, landscape that we have here. Right. So Monday, um, which is where the piece uh, is from, it was a cold, blustery day, as Casey was just saying. And I wanted to go to a spot where I could get in out of the wind because I yeah. find that wind is one of the most difficult things to deal with in painting. I've painted in snow, I've painted in rain, I've painted in desert heat, but I think wind is uh, just about the most difficult. Anyway, um, this is Beaver Creek uh, Campground and it's a place where I've painted before a place I really like a lot and it was really interesting. The last time I was there it was just chock full of uh, people. Uh, it's a popular spot. It's actually a swimming hole and yeah. one of the things that I think is wonderful is uh, families go there. You can see kids playing in the water, mom and dad fishing and preparing food and grandma and grandpa sitting under a canopy watching it all go on. But anyway, this day I had the place to myself. I was there in the morning. And the thing that I really um, uh, wanted to capture was the streak of light going through the middle of the uh, painting. Um, it, it went, it hit the rocks and it continued on through the uh, water. And that's a type of subject that I like to capture in pastel. And I'd also like to say that as time has gone on, for me, it's been less about the subject, of course, and more about the light. But I've also found that um, I'm an intimate painter, meaning I like to find the um, intimate little places and form a real connection with the place. I do think that's so important to, um, to um, pick up on everything that's going on while I'm there. So um, I did get out of the wind. I had to put rocks in my uh, rock bag on the easel to hold it down. Wow, it's I did <laughs> see some movies of the wind going on. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. We'll show one later on, I think. Yes, it was um, intense. But nice as you say intimate piece really lovely thank you thank you kelly somebody uh asked if we could uh post more information about that steering wheel easel that was seen earlier somebody <laughs> to know about it. michelle if you could pass that information along that would be great because then we could just share that on that facebook post Right. What should I, I type it in the comments or something? Oh yeah, if you could do that, that'd be great. Yeah, okay. perfect. Thanks. Right. So who's up next? Linda Glover Gooch. Linda. Hi. Hi, Linda. Hi. Hi, everybody. Linda, where are you? Where are you staying during the event? I'm here in Sedona, out at the Sedona Pines Resort. Okay. Yeah, I. Yeah, I live in Mesa, so I had already, you know, made reservations, you know, how many months ago, and it's only a two-hour trip, and I actually thought it was going to be cooler here, but I wasn't anticipating that. 
you know, because it's kind of warm down there at home still. So I yeah. thought it'd be good painting up here. And that was a surprise. So you got some winter. This yeah. is. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Lovely clouds. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well done. How big is this piece, Linda? This is a 12 by 9. Um, I painted this uh, Sunday afternoon. Uh, Sunday was a magical day in Sedona with all the clouds and the moodiness that was um, hanging around everywhere. I mean, it was a nonstop show of magic everywhere you looked. And, and in the afternoon, we headed out west. Um, this is out at the end of Airy Road. Where, where it dead ends there, there's a trailhead, and uh, it was just glorious everywhere we looked. So I decided to try to attempt to do the clouds. Well, you know, with the wind that we had, that was a bit of a challenge because obviously they were moving nonstop. Yeah. yeah. I just pretty much positioned myself and set in where the blue sky was and then, you know, worked worked yeah. from there and, and hunkered down and... <laughs> hung on to the canvas and paper towels and everything else is it was it was it was really? it was the front end of the cold coming in so it was miserable it wasn't quite cold yet it just the wind was coming this was the front end of that storm because it got really cold that night yeah yeah well great sure job it did great yes. job beautiful thank you thank nice, you nice piece do we have uh Who's up next, Kelly? Is it Elizabeth St. Hilaire? Oh, Elizabeth. Hello. What? I thought we were going off a bed. I thought I was going to be last. <laughs> no, Elizabeth. Um, we went with the H. I think. We went with the H. I didn't expect yeah. that. Hi. I'm to throw it. Throw you for a loop there. All right. So, hello, Hi. Elizabeth. You've been uh, the way. You've got quite a few pieces out. Yeah, I've been working away. Yeah, uh, for the first couple of days, um, I was um, I was here by myself, like just um, working alone. And um, so then I was really highly productive. And then the last and then the last couple of days, I've been hanging out with Gretchen. <laughs> okay, we've been painting together. So, um, but uh, yeah, this this view I'm staying here in Sedona, and this view is Thunder Mountain and the coffee pot and it is um really it is right from where i'm staying so um wow. so i just took my stuff up you know out my door about 200 yards and set up uh, uh -huh. one morning earlier in the week and um so so for for as far as my process goes this is collage of um hand painted paper so i yep. sh schlep all these little bins of um hand painted collage paper outside so wind is not my friend but but yeah. but i can work in in i can do it uh so this day wasn't windy but the sun was really strong um so it's not far from where i'm saying and um and i've really enjoyed being able to work from here i came out uh because i had a zoom workshop that i did from the art center so um so i hand paint all the papers in my studio before i get here and then I do a I do an acrylic underpainting first, so I block in all my um, shapes and uh, light and shadows. And then when that dries, I glue paper on top of it. So nice. So you do two paintings: first a painting, painting, and then a collage painting. Basically, yeah. And this one is um, twelve by twenty-four, so it literally took me all day. I was out in the morning, and I yeah. finished it like really late in the afternoon. So. Um, it was probably a, a really ambitious size, but, um, and I'm working on, um, I'm working on two inch deep uh, cradled panel. So I wrap the artwork around the edges. Um, so, because it's kind of a contemporary um, medium, mixed media. So I kind of give it that uh, contemporary edge. Yep. And, um, and uh, I don't know, I guess that's all, all I have to I say. Also, I also love some of the text that you insert. Yeah. Uh, in some of the 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 musical notation that you find, and so there's some found papers you use as well, right? 
Yeah, I use a combination of rice paper, which is white when I start with it, and found paper. So yeah, I use sheet music and old book pages in the in the rock formation on the far left. Um, there's some type uh, from an old book, and there's some type from an old old German Bible. Um, yeah. And, and it's letterpress, and it's on really oh. old paper. Um, so that's kind of cool. It's got a great font. Yeah. You can you can feel the letterpress uh, text, yeah. and um, and I use a, a combination of different papers, and I paint the papers with uh, stencils and rubber stamps and uh, layers of mark making over each other. So the paper itself is kind of a work of art before I even start gluing it down. That's a lot of fun. That, I can yeah, translate so the paper, German Bible for you. The paper, <laughs> Thank then you, you can, you, There's a lot of work into these because you've got to make your paper, paint your paper, then paint the scene, then adhere the torn bits of paper to the scene. Right, and, the, and chase the torn bits when they start blowing away. <laughs> I mean, if I rip a piece that I absolutely love and I want it to be just so and it takes yeah. off, I gotta yeah. chase after it, and then I get prickly <laughs> pear things in my shoes, and yeah. <laughs> well, good for you. Thank you for thank you for going into that with us. You're welcome, uh, Kelly. Who's up next? Michelle Held. Michelle. Woo, Michelle from Florida. <laughs> Go, Michelle. Hey, Florida. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Michelle. Where are you in Florida? <laughs> I'm in Sarasota. And I understand okay. you've just come to Maitland, right? Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, we paint a lot there over in Maitland uh, at the Winter Park paint out. So uh, between that oh, yeah. and the Wakaiva paint out, we paint a lot in your area. Very nice. Yes. Well, this is quite dramatic. What did you find here? Where, where did you find this? So um, I was super grateful that we were going to paint from our hometown because I tend to travel to all these events and I tend to sort of neglect Sarasota. Uh, so this was at the Marie Selby Bo Botanical Gardens. And I think um, I really wasn't going in thinking I was painting this in particular. Mm -hmm. However, the red and the orange reminded me of Sedona. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why I chose this uh, to sit down and set up there. Um, I do paint, I, I start with a sketchbook. Someone mentioned the sketchbook earlier. I do paint a lot of birds in plein air. Um, and yes, they do move. And yes, these goldfish move, these koi. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of find that exciting, you know, the challenge of, uh, just capturing some color and then I don't get too itty bitty with the detail you know what I mean so uh, I love a fluidity to a painting moving your eye around the canvas and uh, I enjoy painting this so much nice it's beautiful thank yeah. you I love it. I um we were talking earlier how we start, and I actually start uh, most of my paintings with a Grisaille underpainting. Okay. Um, there we are. Yeah, I do a tonal underpainting, and then I try to uh, consider the values. And, and it's not always a complete underpainting, as you can see there. That's about all I did, but I needed to find, you know, where my focal, where I want the energy to be coming from. and more or less the movement around than when I started. You can see my little friends back there. Uh, they're very uh, hungry, I guess. You know, everyone comes to feed them, but um, it, it made for an exciting day and a happy day of getting out. Ugh, that just reminds me of how I felt when I was painting it, you know? Well, I noticed too that you've got this temptation of this uh, flat surface of the water, the waterfall in the background, it all looks pretty, you know, and you really zoned in on a very particular subject matter. And um, I tend to do that. Uh, I do a lot of plein air. Uh, however, I love a personalized vignette. Uh, you'll see uh, some paintings I have coming up. 
I need to photograph. You know, I went to the Ringling Museum Katazan today and painted, but I just chose a nice little vignette. So uh, I do love to embrace the small things. Uh, so I don't know what I, I've never painted Sedona, so I'm super excited to see what I would do with that, you know, next yeah. year. Yeah. yeah. So that's a theme that's coming up a bit is that idea of a, of an intimate personal view of a of a place and how yes. how that that vignette as you say can can evoke the larger story. Yes, yes and 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 I do that is the word I use most when I teach my workshops is I just want to evoke the feeling. I don't necessarily mm -hmm. need you to know the exact mm -hmm. uh, building or, or thing that was there. I just want you to feel it. I want you to be excited and I want you to feel the passion on the canvas. So. Beautiful, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Know you're up thank next. you so much. Thank you, Michelle. And Peggy Emil. Peggy? Hi there. Hi, um, Peggy. Yeah, thank you all for having this event uh, this way. It's a real learning experience, I have to say, but uh, really kind of fun because I've been able to explore Taos a little more, and uh, it, it's just a great idea, so thank you. Thank um, you for participating. Oh, my pleasure. Somebody earlier mentioned that they like to go back to places and uh, paint Yes. The same scene several times. And this Beautiful. scene uh, that I painted on the first day is a scene that I visit every year. Uh, I've painted it uh, at least a dozen times, I think, from different, little mm -hmm. different vantage points, different seasons sometimes. But in the fall, this particular batch of cottonwood just becomes brilliant. And I drove by them. Uh, probably a week and a half ago, and saw that they were really in full glory. So that's what I decided to paint the first day. It's the Rio Grande. It's at the southern end of the uh, Rio Grande del Norte National Monument, I think. It's in the town of Pilar, and anybody who's painted in Taos and painted down on the Rio Grande has probably painted right in this general area. Uh, so that's why I chose it because it's a kind of an old faithful friend. Um, yeah. And in terms of technique, the technique that I've used, uh, I use it in the studio and on site is to do uh, a series of really thin, almost watercolor like washes and look at the abstract shape. And then I use a palette knife to put paint on over those washes, those general washes, mm -hmm. uh, and then go back into it with a brush. Mm -hmm. So really the palette knife is more because I can get the paint on quickly and speed important in plein air and I'm pretty slow anyway. And then finally at the end, like everybody said, I, I um, come in with the tree trunks and the little bright spots, that type of thing. That's kind of the fun part. Mm -hmm. so I like that. Pardon? Nice. I like it. Oh, I like beautiful. It. Yeah, it's beautiful. And the colors, by the way, are really not pushed. That's the color it is. It's just unbelievably brilliant. Yes. Well, you chose the right, the right uh, week to, be, to go to that spot. Right, and also uh, the last two days I've been, I've been painting in the snow like Michelle and Natasha. Uh, we got about twelve inches right in our house, in our yard, and it's wow. so cold. So, um, yeah. I'm gonna, wow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break out my steering wheel easel. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I want. I one. think there's gonna be yeah. a run on the steering it's wheel easel. I think so too. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay, awesome. Kelly, what's next for us? Natasha. Okay, Natasha. Well, hi. Um, I, first of all, I want to say, like everyone else, I'm 
I'm really honored to be a part of this this year. Um, this is my first time to do the Sedona Plein Air Festival, and, and I hate that we didn't get to do it in person, but uh, I'm looking forward to next year. I'll keep my fingers crossed that we get to be there in person next year. Um, the, painting, uh, the painting that I chose is called My Lady of the Canyon. Um, this is done in pastel. The reason that I chose this particular one is not because maybe I might think it's the best plein air piece I've done for this festival so far, but because there was a significant awareness in this one. I had the honor of a month long uh, residency at Ghost Ranch, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was there for an entire month and they allowed me to stay an extra two days so it would overlap into the first of this festival so I could wow. produce a piece mm. up there because that's uh, three hours north of where I live and then paint my way you know, back home because the diversity of the landscape in New Mexico is so incredible. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the thing that I learned about this landscape is, you know, whenever I first got there a month ago, I was thinking, oh my gosh, how do you even paint this? Because there's so much, so much, so much. And I've, I've come from a place of painting a lot of still life and things with a very, you know, fine brush and uh, painting in oil and doing things very, very tight. And, uh, something that I, I really learned about Ghost Ranch is in all those rough edges and all of those big cliffs and towers, there's a softness. The, the ranch has a softness. And um, so editing is like my big thing. So editing wow. this, this scene down, because this scene is a long highway, I think it's Highway 84, it's across the street from just an immense, um, he, I think it shows in one of those pictures, it's an immense um, bunch of cliffs and beautiful, it's impossible to get all that. So I decided to come in on a small section of it. And uh, in my other life, I was a geologist. So, you know, we're used to looking at everything under a, a magnifier and super up close. And so to edit a scene like this is pretty amazing, um, amazingly difficult. And then also it's such a, uh, the, the landscape there is such a particular color. So you, so you can see mm -hmm. there um, up in the right from the telephone pole, left of the telephone pole is the area that I chose to paint that one section because the light was scooting away from me really, really quickly. And of course the light changed from this picture from the very beginning, the, the light had changed quite a lot. But yeah. you know, editing I guess for me is something that I try to teach in my workshops too about editing and to paint what you see. And um, you know, echoing some other folks uh, uh, words, it's, this is so much about painting the emotion that I feel somewhere. I don't try to give you a topographic map of a place that I am. I try to express to you how I felt at that place. So anyway, I hope it came across in this one. It's a little eight by 16 pastel on, pastel premiere is a preferred surface that I work on uh, whenever I'm painting in pastels. And I start with large blocks of uh, the darkest shadows. I catch the shadows first and then work my way out from there. Lovely, beautifully done. Thanks, Ben. Thank you. Um, Kelly, who's up next? Margaret. Hello. Hello, Hi, Margaret. Margaret. How are you? Yes. Nice uh, to see you. Uh, it has Hi, been a, it, uh, it has been a very odd time, I'm sure, for everybody. But it has been wonderful to start to get to know all the other artists, and I look forward to meeting them in person next year, even yes. though maybe not there, Vince, but in any event, it's, it's been fun. It's sort of like being in an honor system. I heard other people talking about treating this like a proper plein air event. And right. for me, I, I've been chasing a little bit out of town from San Diego where I live mm. um, and driving, you know, out with my flask of coffee and ready to, ready to spend the day out painting. Um, this particular piece is called the, uh, tree, the memory of the tree of memory. <laughs> uh, 
um, is um, I had been going toward the desert, but smoke had come up from the desert from the fires in Orange mm -hmm. County. So I changed and went south and then was attracted. I think, I, you know, people have different inspirations, but I was attracted really firstly to the, the red color of the buckwheat plant that I, that I love. And I always paint. I'm, I'm very fond of wild the terrain and the buckwheat. And then this, the, the trunk of the tree lying there uh, was so, uh, it's such a kind of a powerful, back and also getting it coming down um i i had this like a hard moment i have i have a panel that this tree will fit on yeah. you, know how you, <laughs> you you travel with all these different panels sizes in your car and recently i've been really kind of interested in this long horizontal i think natasha and i've, I've seen other people having it as well Yes. Uh, but it's for me, this is the first year that I've really enjoyed it. There's much less sky issue and just getting into the meat of the, of the piece. But anyway, the, I think the piece turns out, um, you know, uh, it turns out to be really about smoke and fire and memory in the mm. sense that the sketch I did was in charcoal and the tree itself is charcoal. Yes. And I'm working in pastel, which is like the pigment, the dust, you know. The dry, the dry. Yeah. And um, so things are starting to be sort of interesting to me about the whole intersection of all these things. And I remember that, you know, there was terrible fire in this area about 20 years ago. This mm -hmm. tree stayed there like a monument, sort yeah. of like pointing to the sky, like, here I am. You know, and, <laughs> and I think, and I think wow. also that, that I remember as a child playing, it's a playground also. It's mm. not only a, it's not only a, a frightening thing. It's, yes. you, you know, you, you, go uh, it and it's, you climb on the branches and you, in an upside down tree. And um, it's so I think it, it locked into memory. It locked into uh, the concerns about the fire and, um, and I don't know. Yes. You know, it's a symbol that people have used many, many times. Um, but well, you, really Margaret, you met, you met a perfect subject matter for you on that day. That's for sure. <laughs> I know. Isn't it funny how, how or, we all chasing something, but we yes. don't know what it is until we get there. That's right. Yes. That's right. <laughs> and you brought that across beautifully. Thank you so much. It's gorgeous, Margaret. Oh, thank you, Susan. Carolyn Lindsay, you're up next. Hello. There you are. Hi, yeah. Carolyn. Hi. Um, I'm actually from the poor old New Mexico, but I'd made arrangements to be gone, so I decided to travel and ended up in Moab. And um, I think the painting that I chose um, was the, um, the first painting uh, that we did, that I did on the... Um, Ooh, which was Mid-Morning Light? Mid-Morning Light, yes. Mid-Morning Light, uh-huh. Mm. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, that's beautiful. Thank yeah, you. nice. Uh, I'd never been to Moab, so I was very excited. So I found this location and uh, just started painting. Um, Procedure-wise, I always do a no-tone and, and clip it to my um, easel um, so that I can see if the basic design is good and to help me keep my value patterns um, straight, you know, and not, not get them mixed up. So um, other than that, I work pretty uh, abstract and then try to hone it in as the painting uh, goes on and um, you know I think plein air painting is a lot of fun hard work and um, I think that um, we're trying to show um, we're tr we as artists are trying to interpret the scene that we see through, uh, through our eyes and you know sometimes it really works out and sometimes it doesn't but it's a great experience well, you got you got um, a really dramatic composition out of that. I mean, 
sometimes when you come to a new place, you have this, I don't know, fresh eyes, beginner's luck yeah. with the new place, you know? Beautiful. That is quite a great composition. Uh -huh. it was, I it love was, this one, it's so atmospheric. It was difficult to, uh, that front mesa, to keep it dark enough, yeah, warm enough, but have it have some interest. Yes. Simple enough so it didn't take away from right actually the focal point in the background and very well done thank you wonderful and brush strokes carolyn where were you yeah in moab? i was gonna say carolyn where were you in moab where was this did you hike up to a place no it's right there uh at uh the needles uh not in the park but in the Actually, we got lost, but <laughs> it was. Yeah. You have to get lost to find it. You have to get lost to find it. Oh, that pinpoints it. That's good. <laughs> yeah. It's a and, secret. And then, uh, this was one day, and then the next day, the bad weather came in, and then we did some snow painting. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you. Nice. Beautiful. Mm. And who's up next, Kelly? Gretchen. Gretchen Lopez. <clears throat> Hi, Gretchen. Hi, everybody. Hey, Gretchen. Hi. Hey, which one are you going to talk about today? Uh, let's see. The one that I selected is the one uh, that I did of uh, the shepherd. And um, the reason mm -hmm. why I'm selecting this one, uh, first of all, I love figurative painting, but I also love painting in plein air and using natural light. Um, and the way I work, I work, for those of you who know my work, I work extremely loose, extremely abstract, but I love figurative. I love working with uh, loose portraiture and uh, capturing, capturing the light. So in the spirit, and also I wanted to thank you all. It's just, it's an honor to be a part of uh, this splendid group of fabulous painters. You all are incredible. You really are. And, uh, I've had the joy of painting with uh, Elizabeth St. Hilaire these past couple of days. It's been really awesome painting with her, but um, I wanted to uh, not have to work with my model in um, uh, a lighting situation, in like inside a studio lighting situation, but I wanted to work with Bill Bolio, who's kind enough to put up with me. Um, I wanted to work with him outside um, uh, in uh, natural light. So um, I wanted to uh, also agree that um, the prep, the drawing is extremely important. And so in working with uh, Bill, I started off with a sketch and then I also do an underpainting too. And um, the underpainting is extremely important to me. Um, I toned this particular piece with a transparent red oxide and then moved into the face uh, to capture shapes, to capture the shadow. There's a wonderful shadow under the brim of his sombrero. And I love painting this cultural um, uh, and very ethnic uh, aspect because it's uh, part of my heritage, but it's exciting too. Um, I also uh, incorporate a bold brush method, which I like to uh, encourage my students to experiment with. Um, bold brush painting encourages me to see the big shapes. And um, so it's uh, a very, very exciting piece. My, my brush strokes, I want them to pull the eye right back up into the um, face of my subject. Mm -hmm. Well, it's great. It's great how you have um, in your work. You combine a really skillful drawing with a very fresh paint application, and that that dialogue is always exciting in your work. And this is a particularly fresh one. Feels great. Thank you so much, Vince. I I really enjoy and love uh, working in plein air. I love the landscape, and I love the landscape of the, of, uh, the portrait and the human figure. I, th I think it's, it's exciting. So 
it was exciting to capture the light and capture the moment too. And, and I also do some editing too. I mean, um, sure. the Serapi he had on, there's a lot of color in there. And I thought, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do a little editing, simplify, get, get some bolder use of shape and color and try to simplify those shapes. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, awesome, Gretchen. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Gretchen. It is beautiful. Thank you, Gretchen. Thank you all so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kelly, who's next for us? Susan Hedegar Madison. Susan. Hi, Susan. Hi. Sorry, it's so dark. My son's room has only one light in it. So I I have a little thing up here. So it's good because it's messy. Um, it just um, makes you look mysterious. <laughs> that's wow. that's master mysterious. <laughs> uh, well, I'm very delighted to be with this group of ladies. Um, uh, they're just all fabulous. And I feel really humble to be in this group. And um, uh also uh thank you for you guys doing this virtually uh this year and making it happen anyway it's amazing just amazing and um for this painting um giants among us is a area i like to go up and paint and uh, i was lucky enough i like to do a lot of I love doing snow paintings. I loved going out in the snow when I was a kid. I used to like riding my horse through snowstorms, and um, mm -hmm. this is just an extension of all of that. Um, this one in particular, it was 12 degrees, and oh. um, it, I oh. used my car as a wind block basically um, to do this, and my oh, paint gosh. got stiff. And I'm usually not a palette knife painter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it, it worked out okay. <laughs> it was kind of really stiff there for a while, but I got it got it moving and um, uh, it was it was interesting because when I realized I wasn't going to be able to work it the way I, I was I was used to doing, I just went ahead and said, okay, well, we'll just see what we can get. And um, this is a beautiful area called Trout Lake um, and it's about 10,000 feet. And um, this was, uh, like I said, I, I just really enjoyed uh, the challenge of, of doing it and, and capturing it. There's still, there wasn't any leaves on the tree, but the, but the aspens, uh, the, the stems still had the color to them. So, uh, which was interesting because usually they're a little deader looking. Uh, <laughs> um, well, I love the pellet knife work. Congratulations. Oh, Excuse thanks. Me. Nice. Madison. Yeah. Madison. And that's a 12 by 9. <laughs> yes. Nice painting. You might be a candidate for the steering wheel easel, huh? <laughs> yes. Yes. It would be nice not to have to stand out. <laughs> yeah, you were braver than I. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working on my gear for a long time for standing out there. <laughs> well, shopping for gear is one of the... <laughs> You know, benefits of being a plein air painter. It's yeah, a lot of. It's called eBay. <laughs> it's like an addiction, I think. <laughs> it's yeah. called it's, retail I'm therapy. What can I have? <laughs> <We're collecting. laughs> Lillian Price is next. Lillian, uh, Lillian from California. Uh, Hello, Lillian. How are you today? Just well. Well. Uh, it's so nice. It's wonderful to be painting in this event, but I surely miss the drive to Sedona and those beautiful red rocks. But we have a lot of rocks over here, and I have this forest boo. That's really loud. It's not that loud. But anyway, there's a lot of rocks in our area, and the beautiful coastline of Big Sur. Um, so I have been going to Point Lobos each day, and the challenge of videoing yourself whilst painting is quite a challenge. While you know, people walking around and just sitting on the trail, so I have my easel stuck in the foliage and over the line. And, but anyway, um, 
I never know what I'm going to paint until I get there. That's my preparation. And I find it exciting. Um, as soon as I don't know something, I go, and that's the last thing I do. It's like when I ride my horse, I have the thoughts of what I'm going to do. And then when I get on, I have something else that I have to deal with, and I might find what I wanted to work on at the end of it, aside with painting. Um, so I like to go and see something just really wows me. I like to just wash the car. Um, and in Point Lovers, there's so many wows and, and the coast, but wherever you drive, sometimes the light's not there, sometimes it's too windy, so each day is a different day. And I, with this painting, I actually prepped my canvas with an acrylic bright color for the rocks. And um, then I went out and just painted it really quickly in abstraction to get the bold color and then the ocean that moves so much, that good luck was trying to fix water, moving water. So I just have so much fun putting the paint up, scraping it down and moving, <laughs> gripping it. And it's, it's just a, it's a workout from the time I'm finished. Hopefully I like it. Um, yes. and I like Terrific. It. That's a 12 by 24. Wow. Yeah, I did some fun on that painting. Yeah, yeah. it's a steel motor frame um, made by Todd Unit next door, and it looks nice and contemporary in its frame. Yes. So dynamic. It's great. Fabulous. Thank you, Lillian. Thank you. I love your palette knife work. Fabulous. Love, we're seeing quite a bit of that. Mm -hmm. That's interesting in this. Uh, this group of painters, I would say, there's more palette knife work than we've maybe ever had. Hmm. It's interesting to see. Um, Hadley's up next. Who's up? Hadley. Me? Hadley. <laughs> well, um, you're the only person named Hadley. This is <laughs> my life. <laughs> How did you, you get your name, Hadley? Um, First of all, um, I too would like to thank you for continuing to do or proceeding with this event, even though we couldn't be there in person. Um, I've loved seeing everyone's um, videos and seeing everyone's work. And I'm just uh, sad that I, I can't meet all of you because I don't really know any of you. So hopefully next year we'll be able to do that. So, um, but anyway, yep. So um, I'm honored to be participating. Uh, and again, like other people have said, especially among all you wonderful artists. So really an honor. Um, I am from Salt Lake City, Utah. However, uh, I, I think it was about last year, I, I got into uh, Sorrel Sky Gallery, which is, they have galleries in, in um, Durango and Santa Fe. And so I started heading down to the Durango and Santa Fe area to paint for the gallery. And I found how much I love painting in um, those two areas. So for this event, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go there. Um, so that's what I'm doing. And uh, currently I'm in Santa Fe However, the painting that I selected is Durango, because I first obviously came through Durango. Um, so this was the first piece I did for the event. And we've all been talking about um, the storm <laughs> that came through. So this was just as the storm was about to come through. And so it was kind of an exciting day as um, plein air painting often is. It was, um, it, it like would rain on me a little bit and then stop, but there was definitely wind and there was just that energy of a storm coming in and that kind of, um, that, that kind of heightened, um, I don't, I don't want to call it anxiety, but, oh, am I going to be able to finish this before, you know, I'm in a torrential rainstorm. Uh, fortunately I was able to finish and I too am a palette knife painter. And I will say, um, a big reason, or really the reason I started painting with a palette knife is um, people have mentioned uh, the importance of drawing. And I have, drawing was always more my strength than painting. But the problem, and I think one of my problems was, was I, I would paint and I was like trying to put too much in, trying to go detailed too soon, you know. And so I actually originally started painting with a palette knife because it forced me 
or it prevented me basically from doing that. It forced me to stay looser. Um, and then I came to just really love painting with a palette knife. The, the, um, the mark making is kind of chaotic. You never really know what the mark's gonna be. And then also it feels, oftentimes I, I feel like I'm working with clay and especially because it's oil, so it doesn't dry. So if there's, there's the pushing and pulling and wiping away and things like that. And so um, it almost feels kind of three dimensional to me. And um, on that note, I'm, I've really um, been loving painting um, rock. I've been really getting into rock lately. Um, it seems to um, work really well with, with, with what I'm talking about, this kind yeah. of um, almost feeling like I'm working with three-dimensional clay. And so kind of mm -hmm. the form of the rock and really um, feeling it almost, even though I'm working right. on a two-dimensional surface. So have you ever, have you ever been to Sedona? Uh, have you ever been to Sedona? No. So this is the You're thing. You're going to love Sedona. Yeah. yeah. You and your pellet <laughs> knife are going to love Sedona. I, uh, yeah. Well, and that, I mean, you know, that was, I was going to say that that was one of the also reasons I was, I was uh, kind of bummed that we weren't going to be able to be there in person. However, this is yeah. great. And yeah. um, so anyway, so yeah, so that, so that piece that was painted just uh, a little north of Durango, just before the storm, beautiful, and I'm glad it worked out. So, thank you for sharing that. That's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. yeah gorgeous. I love the different the different surfaces we're we're getting to experience here tonight. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Kelly. Who's up next? Carrie. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Carrie Ruiz. Oh, Kelly. Hello, Carrie. How you doing? All right. Well, I tell you, I am a very much missing Sedona and the Southwest and the nice warm weather. <laughs> and yeah. the rainy and cold here in New York. Um, it's a regular fall, you know, fall thing. It's cold and, and the, but it makes the colors really saturated in the uh, fall foliage, which we still have. So that's been good. Um, so this painting uh, here uh, was the one I did the first day. And I will say it's a challenge to paint, um, paint, you know, for a festival in my home area. I'm so used to just looking at things around me and enjoying them, but not painting them. And so it was really interesting to look, try to look um, in a different way at my, you know, very surroundings that are, you know, I see all the time driving to the store or, you know, whatever. Um, so because it was uh, dark and, and rainy and all, I wanted to find something that was, that had some warmth in it. And so I thought, oh, I'll, um, an interior of a barn. I really love painting interior of barns, um, especially when they have a light in there, an incandescent light. You get that beautiful glow um, on the beams and you, know, you get these little highlights on you know, the farm machinery that's in there or the, uh, you know the clutter of you know generations sometimes of uh, things that are stored in the barn um, and so this is what I chose and this is actually my um, my grandfather's barn and actually my husband and I our tractor that's actually stored in there so that is Dirty Sally our tractor mm -hmm. that mows our fields and and does a bunch of work for us nice. um, so it's really fun to paint um, something personal um, you know, I don't, I haven't painted, I haven't, you know, painted it. And, um, so, in this scene, I was looking for ways to, because I have the exterior of the, and, you know, the trees on the right side, and then the interior of the structure, and I wanted a, a way to, um, you know, work on that transition between the two spaces um, by using the red you know, warm inside of the barn and then the more cooler green um, on the outside and also using that green on the uh, door of the barn as well on the, on the left side. Mm -hmm. And uh, that transition was a little tricky. Um, I didn't want to have a bunch of the uh, very foreground that, you know, right in front of me in the picture because I really wanted to feel like you were right, standing right at the, you know, at the barn door. And so I, I cut everything out right at the, in the foreground. And then 
uh, I put that, you know, there's a tire there that kind of has that interesting transition between the outside of the barn and the, and the inside. And also breaks up a lot of, because there's a lot of uh, vertical, horizontal, vertical um, elements there. And so that, you know, uh, tire kind of breaks up that as well and, and relates uh, that with the um, rounded, you know, top of the tractor and, and yeah. Uh, yeah. So and I love I love the little peek through there yeah. in the uh, upper left as well. A really nice accent. Cool. Yeah, I like to see through the barn just a little bit, you know, just to, to give you that feel that there's, you know, it's not a brand new structure. It's seen some days, man. It's mm -hmm. you know, it's got yeah. some life. It's there's a lot of stories that are associated with, you know, that barn and you know what's uh, what lives in there and what's stored in there. Beautiful. Thank you, Carrie. Those one Thank you. The angles. And I love the waterfall painting you did today. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gorgeous. Manon uh, next. Who's next? Manon Sander. Manon. Manon. I go. <laughs> Hi, Manon. <laughs> My Florida girl. <laughs> uh, sorry for calling you Manon the first oh, time on Zoom. Everybody does. Don't <laughs> feel <know> about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, the husband of a friend of mine, he just started calling me Mo. <laughs> He's like, I'm not going to do that whole Mano thing. I'm just going to call you Mo. <laughs> That's perfect. So, whatever you want to call me. Anyways, mm. um,. Tell us about this. Yes, a little bit. the last painting, even though, you know, I, I taught this workshop in Sedona last year and I totally fell in love with Sedona, head over heels. So I'm sad I'm not there. But, um, you know, painting from home, and, you know, some other people have said that too. You know, we travel around so much that sometimes we don't take the time to work from home. So it's actually kind of fun to do that. And so this little piece, it's called um, A Little Blue. And I discovered this marina a um, couple of months ago, actually, when I was going out on my paddle board and I paddled into that no trespassing zone <laughs> and um, discovered this marina. And I'm like, oh, you know, that'd be fun to paint, especially since I can set up in this restaurant parking lot, looking across this canal into the marina. And um, just like Betty, I start my painting out with these little four value sketches. I have these value markers. For Lovely. me, it's really important that I have a roadmap before I get started so that I don't lose sight of what's important in the painting. So um, with this piece in particular, you know, I took artistic license and made certain parts uh, different from what they really were so that my little blue boat was really the focal point like you know here in Florida I, I live in southern Florida I'm in Palm Beach County and um, I definitely need that steering wheel easel just so that I can have AC <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I feel for Michelle and for Susan and for those of you <laughs> who have to paint in the cold and in the snow but you know, it's almost November and we have, we still have an, a heat index from 95 of 95 and it's just wow. sweltering. But, um, so we get these brilliant blue light skies. And for this piece, you know, I, I darkened the sky, I darkened the boats just so that my little blue boat, um, stays my focal point. But, um, the people who've been in my classes, um, you know, the way I, I um, lead my classes, I'm very analytical and I break it down in little steps for them because I really think that every brush stroke should be done with intention. So sometimes that seems technical to people, but there's a lot of feeling that does go into my art. So for this piece, in particular with the situation we're all in with this whole pandemic and I was itching to meet you all and be in Sedona and here I am sitting with my husband. <laughs> 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 no, it's all good. But anyways, 
Um, there was this little blue boat in front of all these multi-million dollar mega yachts. Yeah. All of the mega yachts are propped up on stilts. They need fixing. They're not going anywhere, but the little blue boat is still going. It's not perfect, as you can see um, in the painting. It doesn't have a sail on it. It's missing the boom. And um, <coughs> it's still in the water, and it, it'll still go. <laughs> so I was hoping that this painting, in this, this sense, could be a little bit symbolic and keep people hoping and keep people going. So just a little blue, not very blue. <laughs> Thank you. I love that. Sweet. I love that. That is that's so very sweet. sweet. Thank you so much. That's lovely. And Vince, can I ask you something? Yes. I've been staring at these paintings you've got behind you. Oh my God. Is there a way you can paint a, show us the paintings you've got behind you? They're fabulous. Yeah, I'll show you what I've got behind me. This is the Sedona Art Center Art Barn. Ah. This is that photograph by Kelly. And the staff uh, gave this to me when I, as I was leaving. Uh -huh. <laughs> so this will stay with Wish me. Wish you were here, Vince. Wish this you were is, here. Uh, a painting of a, of a plein air painter. This is a uh, I like Brad, that. Brad Holt in the trees. Oh, yeah, yeah. By Joshua mm. Bean. Oh, I love this. Oh, I love, oh, I love Joshua Bean. And then this is a uh, Sedona landscape that I painted when I was there. It's got some. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. oh, oh Mr. Fancy Pants. <laughs> it's in the online gallery. <laughs> wow. right there. But Elizabeth, it's not sold the way your painting just sold. Centuries just sold during this event. Oh. Woo yeah. Did you buy it, Vince? No, I didn't buy it. <laughs> but but it was bought by the president of our board. Oh. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Congratulations, Elizabeth. Yeah. Thank you, man. No. That's fantastic. Awesome. Now you have to do more so you can Dude. keep your five up there. <laughs> Back to work. You get to yeah, let's go. <laughs> okay. Who's up next, Kelly? Susie Heyer. Susie Heyer. Susie, you made a nice movie <laughs> about, I think, about the Susie. people you're going to show us. Susie, you need to turn your, your mute is on. You need to turn your microphone on. How about so that? Is that better? Yeah. yeah you can hear you. Oh, God. Have you been listening to my paper crinkling the whole time I've been painting? <laughs> no. Um, but okay, I, I enjoyed your, your movie where the wind was blowing so hard and you, uh, you were working on this painting. Oh, Jesus. Um, yeah, that was the wind here. So I lost a couple of days of painting the wind here has been unmerciful um the first two days i was here like unrelentless and super intense that painting had so much dirt in it and um <laughs> cottonwood leaves and i i i was able to kind of scrape it out um with a palette knife later but i i couldn't put it down it would have blown away and um my friend um, Sarah Watts took me to, let's see, it was the um, upper Red Rock Loop, which I'd never driven around on. So um, I guess that's how, so I'm actually not clear as to whether this is Red Rock Park, Red Rock Crossing or, or whatever, but it's, it's a really close up um, um, uh, view with... of Cathedral Rocks. Right. So, so that was fun. And, um, my intention on this painting, I guess I should say, I should um, uh, preempt this by saying every, every painting I do, I'm trying to learn something. I'm trying to do something different so I can further my own knowledge and experience in painting. And so you'll probably see a body of work, like I'm looking at my paintings that I've done so far, and they all look really different to me. So I might have a different intention or a different um, idea 
of what I want to explore in mind before I start each painting. And so in this one, I wanted to sort of pull those lights together um, or, or whatever that light shape is to kind of pull it together. And also initially, I really wanted to abstract the um, crap out of this. And um, I, I didn't really do it the way I wanted it. So it's really hard because um, I, I'll, when, I, when I start a painting, I'll paint the painting and then I'll blow it up. And um, so I'll wreck it and then like bring it back in, in a way. I, I've been kind of messing around with this idea. Um, and then, but sometimes you just like, so you paint the painting and then you get like really attached to the painting. And that's the biggest pitfall. Um, even though I start with, um, you know, like what Betty was saying, I have a sketchbook um, that I actually paint in oil. Um, and this is just a little crappy, um, you know, no account um, paper. And I actually paint oil on there. There's the sketch that, that I, and that's what I really wanted to do in the painting. But yeah. I got too attached to like the image of it. And so, so I didn't do that, you know, but, but I have this sketch and now I can do this painting another time because I can do it according to the sketch. So, uh, um, Susie, can, I, can I ask you which, because the framed version has quite a bit different color saturation than the unframed version on the website, huh. which one is closer to to uh, reality from your point of view? Oh, honey, I have no reality. Um, <laughs> you know, one of those I might have uploaded with it's my phone, um, and the other um, might have been from, uh, like I took the photo with my good camera. So what are we looking at? So this is, this is the- Yeah, that's terrible, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, okay. Because, I, because that was just an image of the frame, and. To so show the frame, the frame time? had these wonderful um, red yeah. sort of uh, pieces coming through and it picked up, you can see the gotcha. red on there, gotcha. picked up the red that's in there. Yeah, that's not the color. It's not, it's not as high key as that. I apologize. I really am having a little trouble with the... There's a lot of challenges on all with this. The, the technology, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure it's is. just not my deal, you know. <laughs> But I, but I want to say the oh, idea love, love the that you had of doing this virtually and having everyone paint in their own hometown, I think was brilliant because we have a larger audience that, that, we, that we can draw from and, and we have a greater variety and diversity of, of artwork than just having Sedona paintings. I actually came to Sedona because it's nine frickin' degrees at home and the picture I got at home it was snowing he had the Christmas tree lights on the outdoor trees and I'm thinking, you know nine degrees I'm, I'm sorry I'm not I'm not painting outside sorry not having it <laughs> yeah good move good move <laughs> coming to Sedona and getting getting a lot of wind <laughs> yeah and then getting a lot of wind and then freezing freezing yeah, in the morning freezing. <laughs> but it's barely doable it's doable but it was doable Good for you. That's a fun you know, movie you made of making that painting. I appreciate that. <laughs> Paula Swain. I'm trying to keep my PTSD in check. <laughs> Did you say Paula Swain is up next, Kelly? Paula Swain is up next. Oh, okay. hey, Paula. Can you hey, see Paula. me? My first. Oh, there. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so thank you for the invitation. It's really an honor to be invited to this event. Um, I started off, I was going to paint in Utah, Capitol Reef, Boulder Mountain, Grand Canyon, and then paint my way down to um, Sedona. But then I read the instructions. <laughs> it's like, oh, we can't start painting until October 24th. So, so I thought, oh, I'll go to Sedona. It'll be warmer there than Utah. And ha ha, no. But, but today was gorgeous. So, um, and then you want us to talk about our process? Um, yeah, talk about this particular painting, Paula. Oh, this was just, I didn't, I just wanted to try something totally different. And I, uh, usually when I'm alone, I try to think of every painting as an experiment. 
just to push wherever I'm going with my art. Um, this was today. I went with Susie Hire, and we went up. What road was that? This. Um, oh, uh, wait. I have to unmute. This there was a lady with all these different cactus in her um, yard, and it was amazing. There's purple and pink and red and green and yellow cactus. Mm. And we, um, I asked permission. She was a really nice lady, and she let us paint in her yard. Mm -hmm. um, I like color. And I, so I used to paint really representationally and I got really bored with that. There's nothing wrong with representational, but I got bored with it. So I like um, a lot of color and I, my dad was a painter and he taught us to squint, squint, squint and paint the patches of color that you see. Yeah. And so that's what I try to do. And then I also, I talked about this for the first time yesterday is I had some eye damage in my left eye and um mm. it was really windy a palette was it was just a piece of um plastic cardboard it blew up and hit me in the eye and i have a huge floater in the middle of my uh, oh. left eye and so i went to the eye doctor and they said oh we can do surgery we can correct that floater but about six months later you'll probably need cataract surgery and so I thought, oh, I'll wait 10 years until technology advances. Maybe they can come up with something less <laughs> invasive. Yeah. And, but, um, as, and so I was really mad and sad. And it's like, crap, this is my vision, my eye. But then when I was painting, I, I noticed in the middle of the floater, there's all these really cool co colors. And so it's like, I'm just, this is a blessing, I think. And then now I also take off my glasses. My vision is really bad. And then I don't have to paint every blade of grass, every pine needle. Um, and so that's, so I, and I think if you're a plein air painter and you're outside all day long painting, those colors are really out there. Um, if you're really looking and you're sort of trained to see color. And so, yeah, I push it, but um, it, it's what I love and it's fun. So, so that's what I, um, and also I have a, if you have any questions, I'll answer them. But I have a steering wheel easel, and I can show it to you and, I, and give you the measurements so you can make your own. Anybody? In the chat, maybe? Um, put that on your Facebook page. OK, OK. Yeah, thank you. Uh -huh, thank you. Okay, who's next? That looks like Ellie Wilson. Ellie, I was concerned for you. We hadn't seen any work and suddenly two more pieces arrived. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite all right. I was just like, where is she? What, what's happened? <laughs> it was a crazy weekend, but it was good because everybody on your team is on top of it because I got emails from all of you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> In the course of an hour, it was like, what happened to you? Are you okay? I was like, I'm okay, I promise. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, um, then, I, then I saw that you were sending in movies. So thanks for that. Those, those look fun. Yeah. Ooh, that's um, so, okay, let's see. Can we see the other one, actually? This is... Um, I have it behind me. It's called uh, Fall Glow. Uh -huh. um, I, so I started painting it. So it was, it was a wonderful weather last week. And then this week hit as it has with everybody and it just has cooled off. It's been miserable. And all of the fall leaves kind of got blown off the tree. So I found this one patch in um, my parents' backyard where I grew up that still had mm. some leaves on the trees. That's so cool. I, got to capture just kind of the last bit of fall before these leaves all come off. And where are you at? I'm in Utah. Okay. Yep. Uh, so these are just some maple trees in Utah. The thing that drew me to the scene was the light and the way that the light was bouncing off the leaves and up into the trees and the colors mm -hmm. that were um, glowing back and forth into each other. Um, and I just, I had a lot of fun with that. I had a lot of fun with the textures 
just like trying to build up areas where like all those fall leaves are on the ground that you can kind of like crunch on them. And I just like love the smell and the sound of everything in fall. So just trying to embody that into a painting and capture it. Um, anyway, I, in terms of like process how to paint, I think everyone has said the most amazing things. I don't think there's anything else that I could really, really add in without taking up a lot of time. So just listen to all of these things these wonderful women are saying. They're all my heroes and I love them all. And I really wish I could like be around all you guys because you're all incredible. And I miss a lot of you. I haven't seen a lot of you in a really long time. So anyway, that's my painting. <laughs> Thank beautiful. you, Emily. It's wonderful. Great, great brushwork. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Jane Ann. Okay. I'm, Jane Ann. Hello, Jane Ann. Well, Jane Ann. Like, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I um, also um, was disappointed to not meet everybody in person. Um, but I will talk to you a little bit about the um, this scene that I painted. I was looking for a really strong silhouette. Um, it was mm. a great and um, I wanted to have that value value contrast um, and so when I can um, simplify the shapes down into linear shapes for me it seems to work a little bit better I can see the values a little bit better and, and I can organize it in a way that is a nice uh, a nice value pattern and so I knew that with um, the overcast day the, this barn and and the gray skies behind would create a nice little sil silhouette and a nice value pattern. So that's what I was looking for with this painting. And then at the very end, the clouds parted and as the sun was setting, it um, just great, gave this great glow uh, to the side of that barn. And then I lost all the light. And so I had to go back another day and, um, another evening and finish it up, but um, oh, yeah. I really enjoyed it. You ended up with some really subtle, warm and cool grays. Yeah. Really lovely sky, yeah. Thank it's you. nice Very to beautiful. see all those paintings behind yeah, you as well. Pardon? It's nice to see all those paintings behind you as well. Oh, oh yeah, amazing. well, those are all my, my practices. <laughs> uh-huh. You know. Uh -huh. I, I need a little uh, shelf space like that. That's a nice idea. Yeah, yeah. that's brilliant. It's been really helpful. I have no closet in the studio, so I can I can stack. I just got the shelves at IKEA, and uh, kind of floor to ceiling, and I can stack about this much. Behind. Yeah, so. right. Well, send us a link. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> And thank you. Um, Kelly, who's up next? That's it. That's it? That's it. <laughs> oh my God. That's it. Well, listen, what a great job you guys all did. I really appreciate the, uh, the insights into process. And I really appreciate the body of work that's showing up on our website. Beautiful um, work. And that, that uh, gallery is going to kind of fill up over the next couple of days. And then we're going to meet here again, so to speak, on uh, Saturday, October 31st. Lynn Boyer is going to join us. And she's going to do uh, the awards. We're going to do two sets of awards. We're going to do a set of awards on the body of the, of the, uh, of the plein air work. And we're going to do a set of awards on the original um, initial piece that you submitted to the festival, which is a work that could be a uh, plein air or studio. So we look forward to uh, seeing what Lynn came up with there. And, can I uh, share something with the group, Vince? Yeah, go ahead. Can, can I? I I'm sorry, but I'm really excited right now because I just heard that I have become a grandmother for the second time <laughs> while we were in this meeting. 
little Alyssa has joined the world, and I think it's a very good sign. I have a feeling she's going to be very artistic because you know she's getting this vibe from all of us. Thank you. I'm very excited about that. Yeah, you know, so that's that? exciting. So look, where's she's, that? Uh, the parents are. She's. It happened at 4:53 today. So just as uh, just as Debbie was getting me set up here, and we were chit chatting. Alyssa came into the world. Oh, um, look okay. for, uh, I'm going to have to take some portrait lessons now, Gretchen. <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you all so much. This has been really nice. Thank you. By the way, will this Bye, be uh, available? If, if anyone, you know, says, yeah, oh, this is that, I want to see it. This, this will be live there. on Facebook. Uh, okay. It will stay on Facebook and it will be uploaded to our YouTube channel tomorrow. Okay. Cool. That's great. So we can all share it. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you all so much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you guys. Oh, very inspiring. Thank you. We'll, we'll see you all again on Saturday. Yep. Okay. We'll see you on Saturday. Bye. Bye. Awesome. Bye. 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 Bye